First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, uh, I've got a little bit of sadness to tell you today, folks. Um, little Johnny in the back of the room has left the class. He's decided to move on, and I'll show you why. I posted a chart in here, and this is the chart of the Dow Jones E-mini. And as you can see here today, when uh, it hit this exact 382 of the high we made the day before yesterday, you can see it hit exactly 382 and it promptly dropped 700 points. Johnny said, I've had enough of school. I am taking off. He was kind enough to leave us his little 382 card, which was nice to see, but he's on his way. Good luck, Johnny, and we want to wish you the best of luck on whatever you decide to do. Now, I wanted to show you another one, folks, just to show you the value of some of these things. And I know I'm getting through because I got two emails today for people that did this. And that really makes me very, very happy. If you'll take a look here at this next one, this is covering the last uh, week or so because you'll be able to see this. This is the uh, S&P. You'll notice how we went up to this level here. This was the low we made back here on uh, September the 27th. Now, this is equal to what we were looking at when Tim Boss was talking to us. In, in 1987, it was the September 27th low of the solar eclipse. The market rallied up into the Venus Uranus and Mercury retrograde, all that stuff that was happening right now. And then it was October the 3rd. Here it's coming in uh, today. And you'll see here the rally today, exactly 382 of the high that we made up into this area. And we've now gone below the 61% retracement. Folks, if we close we, down in this area somewhere, that's exactly what happened in the stock market in 1987. I don't know if there's going to be anything really nasty or anything coming back, but my God, we've got crude oil. Look at crude oil, $93 a barrel. Three days ago, it was 78 Come on, folks. Somebody's doing something out there. I don't know what it is, but uh, be really careful. So if we close below this level here, which that level in the S&P is uh, 36 uh, excuse me, 36, <clears throat> 36 If we close below 36.55, that will tell us that, uh-oh, this may be something that's really going to be really, really nasty. So, it, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The fact that it's working so nice, and there's very few people, I mean few people, I mean 0.0001% that are looking at things that Tim Boss was looking at. You know, these are, these are astrological things. Sure, they repeat. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. But the market is telling us, you know, something is not, uh, not right here in Denmark. So let's remind ourselves that that's uh, what we're going to be looking at. Okay, our guest today, uh, Mr. Elides, uh, Peter Elides, was, uh, can you imagine, he was just a little bit over, well, over committed today to all of these markets. And so I think it's important that we uh, keep in mind that we can't always uh, – get our guests to come on their time because they get very, very busy. Now, I wanted to uh, bring another chart up that I think is uh, very, very important. To me, it is because I have a pretty good idea sometimes of what's happening to these markets. But this is what we've been looking at today, looking at my AI program. My AI program is nothing more than snapshots just like facial recognition. In other words, we take facial recognition pictures from two days ago, 10 days ago, five days ago, whatever it happens to be. And when these, these patterns line up, it gives a prediction of what the market's supposed to do. This is telling us, and let's hope that this is the case, that we could be rallying here in just a little bit towards the end of the day. But remember, when these fail, like when it hits this level right here and fails, that's not a very good sign. So... Throughout this one hour that we're going to do, I'm going to update this 
because if we can hold this level here, which comes in in about a half an hour to 45 minutes, and we can hold that, then we've got a chance for it. Now, this doesn't tell you the volatility is going to be that much. This tells you there's just going to be a, a rally. It's a time sequence. It has nothing to do with price. And that's why it's valuable, because it gives you some time frames you know, to look at. Look at this one right here. You see that number right there on this one right here? That was a 382 of the previous high back in there. So that's what I try to do when I try to line these things up. I hope that makes you know good sense to you. Okay. Now I want to because this is such an important day. I really want to focus on that chart that uh, I brought up earlier from 1987, and I was very heavily involved with this. In fact, Byron and I were were talking about this uh, last night because it looked so very similar. But as we came in, uh, as we came into this level, see this day right here. This day right there, the high of the day, August 25th, 1987, was Harmonic Convergence. That's the one I'd just written the book, and Bill Griffith had me on the show. And on that day, it was that week. I don't remember exactly. It was that week of the 25th. And uh, I said the market should top. And then sometime during the month of October, we should see a down move of well over 300 points in the Dow Jones in one day. The biggest down move the Dow had ever had up until that time was 191 points. And all I did was I measured 100, I calculated 191 times 1.618, and that got me to 300. Well, I was way off because the Dow was down over 500 on October the 19th. So if this sequence of numbers that we're looking at today is correct, the biggest down move we've had so far has been 1,300 points from high to low. That was the day of the Fed uh, back on August, whatever day it was. I don't remember. It was thir uh, 1,300 points. So you multiply 13 times, guess what, 1.618, and you come up with what, folks? 2,100. So we're looking at some time, possibly next week, if this is correct, we should see a down move of 2,100 points in the Dow Jones, maybe more, maybe less. I'm just saying you, this is the way the sequence is lining up. You give me 100 of these folks, and uh, even Johnny will come back to school on that one. So anyway, that's what you have to do. Now, personally, during that time frame right here, when we, this was October the 2nd of 1987, uh, my daughter had just been accepted to medical school in a big eastern place. And uh, it was very, very expensive. I had she had part of a scholarship uh, because my grandfather belonged to the Italian American Club uh, in New York when he came here from Ellis Island back in 1907 or whatever it was. And uh, but that was only like five grand. But anyway, I, I put on a bunch of puts there. And I said, if I'm right on these puts, I'll be able to cover it. Well, what happened was this was October the 2nd. Okay. Uh oh, I think we're on a break now. Are we on a break, Al? Could somebody help me where we are? We're not on a break. Okay, well, all of a sudden I start hearing echoes. The market on October the 16th, the Dow closed down 104 points, and I had covered that education. Had I. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we do have Peter Elides on the line now. I believe we do. Peter, are you there? I'm here, Larry. I'm here loud and clear. Well, you certainly had this market nailed so far. What do you see in the forecast here these next uh, couple of weeks, Peter? You know, Larry, in this business, I you hesitate to be dramatic because <laughs> you, end up on your ass, you end up on your ass somewhere out in Pittsburgh. But... but uh, uh, we are at a rare, rare juncture in the market. This is, uh, in some ways, I would say something that only happens every maybe three or four years. But in other respects, this may be something that only happens every 40 or 80 years. So this this is very exciting. And the juncture that we're at now, I think, is going to prove yay or nay in terms of what the heck we're looking at, okay? Okay. So um, I'm going to try and show your viewers that if we can, you have a couple of charts there, and I know I can share my screen too, but if we, those charts that you have, if you can bring up either one of those and let me talk about them a little bit. Uh, do you mean the ones I just showed just a minute ago or the ones, because I didn't get any, I didn't get any charts from you, Peter. I don't know why, but I didn't okay. get any. Okay. You know what? Don't worry about it. Let me do a share screen here. Okay and a desktop and I do start sharing and see if you can see my screen. Okay, they'll let me know if that's possible. I think it will be. Because this, this is a, a truly remarkable time zone that we are in. Um, and while we're waiting, there's a gentleman by the name of Aaron, I think it's Aaron Hackman. I had never heard of him before. But he did this remarkable video that one of my uh, subscribers pointed out to me. Um, and it talks about this time zone that we're in right right this very moment. Mm -hmm. Hold on a sec. I tried that screen share and it didn't seem to work. It says, oh, maybe it did work. Do you, do you know if we're sharing? If we're sharing uh, I'm going to ask him, uh, have we uh, posted something now for Peter? Because I'm not seeing it yet either myself. 
uh, it didn't work at distance. Just go, Peter, just go ahead and talk about it because, uh, oh, we have it now. So we're up and running. Let's go right ahead. Okay, good. So I'm going to show, first of all, there's a couple of charts here. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Can you see that pretty well? Yep. We're in okay. good shape. So here's what we're looking at here, and this is why this is so remarkable. That little red zone underneath current prices, this is a weekly bar chart, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I took this shot maybe about an hour ago, so that, that's when the Dow was down about 489 points. Mm -hmm. um, so here's what we're looking at. It's a weekly chart of the Dow. The red zone beneath current prices is a, a confirmed downside projection that I already have. It's uh, calling for a move on the Dow between 26, 726 and change and 28,099 or 28,100 rounded off. So the odds are excellent that we get down to at least that level. So I guess one would say, well, big deal, Elias, we get down to that level, it doesn't sound historic to me. Well, here's what it's telling us, though. Those two lines the red line and the blue line are 100 week offsets. They show what the prices were. The red line shows prices 100 weeks ago, and it's formed by simply joining the mid bars of every weekly high and low. So that's the median or mid price of prices 100 weeks ago on the red bar, 110 weeks ago on the blue bar. When you go above and below those lines in the market, you generate projections. This is the old Hearst technique that I like to think that I've made a few positive revisions on myself. But basically, this, this is just old-fashioned Hearst work right here. Getting below those bars with the Dow, and it would require the mid-price of a weekly bar getting below those bars. And as you can see from the projection we have already, that that's quite likely to happen. Once you get below those weekly bars, then you measure the distance from the all-time high, which is way back in uh, the beginning of uh, January of this year, to about the halfway point, which would be a breaking of these lines, and that would be around the 28,000 level. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that you're going to go from the all-time high to the halfway point of 28,000, generating a downside projection of around 19,100. Wow. So, Peter, uh, I have a question. Were those the FLD lines that uh, yeah, Chris worked on? People call them FLD. I don't, I don't know. Future line of I demarcation is what it was. I, I remember yeah, they, I remember uh, being in your house once and showing you showing me that. And that's, been, that's only been about three months ago. No, thousands of years <laughs> ago. But I remember it very well. Yeah, go ahead. Please continue. Yeah, that's exactly what they are. He, they were called by the Hearst people, uh, future lines of demarcation. But I, I, you know, I just call them cycle offsets line. Yeah. They are a half span of the cycle you're measuring. If you're measuring a four year cycle, then you want to move it over two years to see when you pass through. And that's what we're looking at here. So that's what the Dow looks like. Now, I will say this, 19,000 projection is dramatic enough but if we put on a two-year or, or a four-year four, four year offset, nominal eight-year projection, it could get even lower than that. I'm not going to talk about that now. We'll talk about that in the future sometime if we even start to get close to that downside projection, Larry. But let me, let me switch to the uh, switch to the S&P now. Let's see. I mean, and the reason why this time zone is so dramatic is because, as you can see, you don't get above and below these lines very often. So we're coming into this yeah. time zone. Here's the S&P, okay? So the all-time high in the S&P shows over there at 4818.62. I've drawn in this line. This is At this point, it's hypothetical. It's at around 3,500 now, 3,495. Again, if we get below this black line with a weekly mid price, and this red zone says, yes, it's going to happen, and the odds, the odds on this projection, this software does 
uh, percentages and statistics, Larry. And it said that for the last four or five years, these projections have been like 80 to 100 percent. That's for this red zone right here, okay? So we, we have a confirmed projection to between 3182 and 3390, let's say, on the S&P. Mm -hmm. Getting down there would almost assure that we break below these lines. And if that happens, I've just taken a rough area down here. In fact, this is a very conservative area that gives a projection on the S&P of 2172. So that's wow. why that's why we are in such a critical area right now. You don't get these crossings very often, okay? And we're in a position to do that yeah. this month. Can you stay with us for one more segment, Peter? Sure, sure. We'll be right back, folks. Peter Lighty, Stock Market Cycles. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Peter, thank you for holding on for another. This is Peter Lighty's folks that we're talking to of uh, Stock Market Cycles. Peter, one of our listeners asked a question, can they learn to do this yourself? And Peter, this is what I remember. Okay, now we're going back you know, 45 years or so. Oh, probably more than that, 50 years. Well, well how much? Yeah, 50 old, years. Larry, come on. Well, pretty close. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the book came out in 72, and we've been friends since 65, for God's sake. Do you remember? I, I remember you showing me that you, you put out, we had a chart of the Dow Jones, and it was on the old commodity perspectives, and I had an uh, onion skins. And what I did was I traced over the first cycle on the onion skin, and then I moved it forward. Moved it over, it, yeah. Isn't that how you do it? That's the way I did it in the old days. 
Harry. Yeah, I, that's what <laughs> exactly I, yeah. the way I, I know I it's did. all computerized, yeah. but I, I remember that very vividly because that led me to the old ABCD because, you know, those big ones, that's how they end up. Hey, listen, I know you're really busy, but we'll have you on again soon. But I have one other question. Is there a crash coming this coming week? Well, that's why I was going to try and encourage people to to watch this video of this gentleman. I I hesitate to let me put it this way. If there's going to be a crash in the market, this is the ideal situation in the next couple of weeks. OK, yeah. So so th we are in the ideal time period. We have the ideal background going on cycle wise. So if there's going to be a crash, yes, it's likely to happen in the next few days, a few weeks going into the end of October. I'm not predicting it's going to happen. Yeah. But I'm saying if it if it does happen, the likelihood will be that it happens here and now. That's all I needed to hear from you, my friend. We'll have you on again soon, and may God bless. Thank you for being our guest today, too. It was uh, me, really Larry, enjoyable let me having quickly, you on. Let me, let me quickly ask you how you're doing there, because I was concerned about you and the weather there. Oh, no, it's fine here in Tucson. We've had uh, really, you know, this is, we're in our, uh, what do you call it, the uh, uh, monsoon is over, so everything's fine. We're doing okay. Okay. All right. I don't I'm go out when it's 110. I figured that out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's Peter, great. thanks for joining us, my friend, and we'll have you on again soon, okay? My pleasure. Thank you. You bet, folks. Okay, Peter Lydes, folks, Stock Market Cycles. We'll be right back after we pay a few bills, I believe, and I think that's what's on the agenda here. And is that correct now? I hope so. <laughs> Oh, six minutes to the break. How can I? Oh, my goodness. You know, I see what's happened. All right. Sorry, boys and girls. Let me get up here. I got so excited talking about Peter in the old days. I wanted to get this up here and show you. Folks, here's what we have moving. Ah, stop the front. Shut the front door and raise her in here. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Let's get this up here. Okay. Here is what I'm looking at, folks. This is... Okay, let me explain to you what how, how I used to do this with, with Peter, okay? Now, you take a blank chart, okay, and then you put an onion skin over this. You know, you can draw a picture. So you put the onion skin like this, and then you draw the cycle on the onion skin like this. You just draw this cycle in like this, all right? And then what you do is you move the onion skin forward to match the next low. So what you're looking at is you're looking at this cycle here moving out. He called that an FLD, a future line of demarcation, uh, Hearst did, okay? And Fourier analysis was involved. That's what Peter does and with his computer stuff. But that was a simple, you know, dirty way to look at it. But when I was watching these, when I drew these onion skins, all of them were ABCDs. Let's see. Hello, operator. Oh, Johnny just came back in the room. Oh, he just came by to say hello. He's still trading. So anyway, but that's all I did. And, uh, you know, so it, it works pretty well. But uh, all this stuff now is computerized. That's why you've got to be able, you've got to be watching these guys with the algorithmic trading folks, because these dudes are really smart. You know, they, they've got a lot of stuff going on in their lives here. Now, let me there's something else going on right now that is very, very important. And I wanted to uh, bring it up to your attention. Hold on just a second here, because I want to get to show you where we're at, because we've got a chance here for a rally it's as, it's like the chance brothers slim and none but i want to get it up to you just just it'll take me two seconds just don't panic i will get it done hold on just a minute we'll get that up here and this is a simple timing tool but it works really good folks here's where we are in the market right now as we speak and i want to get this right here for several reasons those of you that like fibonacci number your fibonacci number on the whole thing from from uh, Friday, uh, Monday through Friday, came in at uh, 36.67. You can see here we're supposed to be rallying. Now, if we start making new lows anytime now, this means that we're going to be heading down, and that's not going to be a good sign for coming in to next week. Okay, that that's all I'm trying to give get across now. Since this is such an important day, and you know, hopefully, yeah, hey, no matter what happens, do you realize the crash of 1987 gave us the best buying opportunity of the 1980s? Because that low that we made on that day with the Dow down 550 points, 16 percent, by the way, was exactly the 61 percent retracement of the low from August the 9th. That's when. Uh, we started August, excuse, August 9th, 1982. Okay, now, 
One other thing, I want to get up here to talk a little bit more about this 1987 thing because it may or may not happen, but, you know, yeah, I'm not saying there's going to be a crash either. I'm just saying just be really careful in here. That's what you want to be watching. But you'll notice here on this day right here, we closed here on the 16th of October, Dow down 140 points. That was a lot because there's only trading at 2,600. Okay, so that was a huge move, 4%. And that paid for Jill or Laren's education the next four years. Had I kept it and had November options that's expired, they expired on October 16th, right on the low. I got the best best fill, fill profitable. Had I hold it and I held it the next day, I could have bought Harvard. Well, not quite. Different. Anyway, it would have been a lot of money. It would have been 20 times what I originally made. Oh, more than that. But you couldn't get fill down here because there was no liquidity. Everybody walked out of the pits. You couldn't get fills. Long or shorts. So it was a really, really dramatic day. Of course, we bottomed on the 19th and we went up forever. But anyway, uh, it'll be a great buying opportunity no matter what happens. So and if it doesn't happen, that's good, too. But if we start making new lows now, anytime now, this is not going to be good for the stock market closing. We're down, what, 700 points in the Dow? How's it going to look if we don't rally you know, my goodness, this is not going to look very good. That's uh, that's what we're paying attention here to today. Now, I I know maybe this be a little short term microscopic for some, but that's what I'm watching. And I whether that's going to be the case or not, I don't know. But right now, it's holding up relatively well. As well as long as we don't get below, I've got my limit minder in right now. As long as we don't get below 36.54. That's only six points away. In the in the S and P, uh, we we have a chance to rally. But if we break that, that sequence that we're looking at has been broken, and that tells us that there's something wrong in River City. Okay. Now I wanted to share just to show you how these things work. Now sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But look at this, folks. This happens to be another. I'm not not involved in this at all. I just saw it. Someone brought it to my attention, and you'll notice here this was our prediction today for crude oil. Now look, the high came in right at the high it was predicted to come in at, okay? Now that's not a big deal. All, all you have to do to figure this out is just go back three or four days and see the sequence, you know, the repetition or the cadence that's there, and you'll say, well, how the odds favor are sometime the top coming in between 10 and 11 o'clock on, uh, on Friday. That's all it is. Okay, now look, it's already backed off. It's already backed off almost a dollar already. You know, so I don't know if it's going to be the high or not, but this this number right here was only uh, 30 pips away from the 78 percent level of that UJBCD to the downside. So that's what we're looking at. We're going to take a break. 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, a request here about Apple. Uh, you'll remember here last Friday, we were sitting down here at uh, 40 and change, and I said the buy came in at 35, 39.47, and the, uh, <laughs> let's try it again, Larry, 139.47, the low was 137.96, so it missed it by about $1.10. Then we had the five-day rally, a four-day rally, that was a 382 retracement of the previous high. You know, and what this means, folks, this means this could be high translation. In other words, if you come down to this low like this, and then you go up, and then you break this low, that means that this cycle crest has already peaked and it's going to go down. It means it's, it, it peaked on the right side of the, of the, of the angle where it's supposed to, to do. You see on these cycles here, look at this. You see how these cycles are all peaking on the right side of the thing. On these, they're peaking or they're they're dropping down on the left side. That tells you you're in a bear market. Those were all part of the things that you know trend lines will help you to look at. But uh, all I'm doing, folks, is looking at simple time counts. That's all I'm doing for. I'm just looking at simple time counts. That's all I'm looking at. The thing that concerns me the most today is the fact that we've had this crude oil just go absolute ballistic here. This week, you know, just in the last eight trading days, we've gone from 76 to 93. Folks, with that coming, that kind of stuff coming in in Europe, with uh, natural, of course, natural gas has sold off from the high. We sold it very close to the high on our position yesterday. It's down about 20 bucks from there, so we're going to wait until Monday to look at it. The only, the only position we have right now is the short on the S&P from 38.10, and uh, we plan to hold that unless it's uh, stopped out, but. It's still got a chance. The market is holding up relatively well right now. And as long as it can do that, you know, uh, we should be okay. But we we cannot go below 36.54, folks. 36.54 is not good. I mean, that is something that is really, really bad. And you don't want to get involved with really, really bad. That just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it really doesn't. It uh, makes it a uh, little, little difficult, as they say, in the trade. Okay, let me get back to... Uh, uh, I want to post this chart that we've talked about twice this week already, and we're going to do it again because it's been following along what we thought was going to happen. Uh, I have the uh, original one here, but you'll be able to see it. This is the area right here, folks, is where we had the really strong – I used to have an arrow pointing at it, but I've lost that one. In other words, when we marked it, came down, we made this low, and in a three-day rally, we rallied to the 382 retracement of this high way back here. That's all that was, was a 382 retracement. And then, boom, down we came. Now, this pattern is from 2008. That has nothing to do with the pattern that Tim Boss talked about for 1987 to where we are right now. He, he outlaid this, folks, he outlaid this map to us two and a half, three weeks ago, way back in September 2nd or something, 10th or something. Yeah, around the 10th. And then what, what's happened, it's done exactly what, what Tim said it was going to do. 
It was going to bottom on the 27th, rally up to the, to the, the early second or third. And that's what Stan Harley said. Stan Harley said, we're going to get a two or three day rally and bada bing, bada boom. That's what we got. Three day rally. So if we close badly today, don't be long stocks. Or if you if you want to buy stocks, you're going to get a really good buying opportunity sometime in October. And guess what month we're in? We're in October. Unfortunately, little Johnny's left the class. He usually raises his hand and say, we're in October. That's how smart little Johnny was. But now he's a professional trader. He started trading the orange juice pits just a few hours ago. Uh, they don't even have pits anymore in New York, so that wasn't even a very good joke. <laughs> okay, next week, hopefully, uh, hopefully, with some luck at all, we might be able to have uh, Bill Meridian on of Stock Market Cycles. We, we love to see his work. He's one of the top, one of, well, one of the top two or three, I don't know if he's first, second, or third, but he's way up there for cycle stuff that I know, and he is extremely, extremely good. Not only does he do usual cycle work, he's a master astrologer. He's uh, He really understands those things, uh, you know, uh, a great deal. So let's let's remind ourselves, folks, to be really careful. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't lose. Now, I don't know if I should make a uh, promotion, but on November the 10th, I don't know what time it is. It's in the morning sometime. I'll be doing – it's at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, on the 10th. I'll be doing the lead show for the Money Show Virtual Trading. I'll be doing 45 minutes. I, I may or may not put on a trade, but those of you that have been in here, you don't really know. You don't really need to see it because you hear it every day. I'm not going to do anything different because I don't know anything different. So it's just A, B, equals D, D. That's all I'm looking for, and that's all I care about. I know one thing, as Curly said, A, B, equals C, D. You give me that, and I'll be okay. So that's what we're paying attention to here so far today. But we've got, uh, what, a couple of minutes here to go. Uh, we have a question from someone asked to, to repost that chart of the um, S&P. Get this up here today. I wanted to show you because both of these were the same. I posted them the same. Your rally here today was exactly the 382 off of the high we made here. It did it exactly the same thing in the Dow Jones. That was a 3,000 and uh, 3,095. It didn't even hit 3,100. 3,095, and then we went all. We dropped 600 handles all the way down to uh, 30, 93 and change, and that's where we're that's where we're hanging hanging right now. So. That's uh, pretty much what we're watching. This uh, stock market is not really rallying as much as we'd like to see it, but we'll have to wait and see if it's going to be able to uh, to do that or not. Well, just one thing after another, and that's uh, what we're paying attention to here so far this morning. Okay, uh, okay, one other. Oh, someone asked about the silver. Hi ho, silver. Just a second, and we'll get it up here. And uh, that's been a really good one for us this week. We'll get this up here and. I think it's a daily we've been watching. Yep, and we've had some really, really big moves here uh, in the silver. Uh, I think I can do the four-hour and make it even clear. There we go. There's what I want to show you. Hold on here one second, and we'll be right up here to take a look at it. Okay, here's where we are. All right, we went up silver. We hit the exact 1.618 retracement. We sold it there with a five-cent stop. It came down. We covered it right there. It rallied up. There's your 135 pattern on the downside. Went right up to the 78% uh, level. You can see it's backing off. Now, what this sets up, it sets up a possibility now for silver to make a really nice A, B, C, D coming right down here to this level right here, the 50% retracement down about another dollar or so. And that's going to be a really interesting one because that's going to be an ABCD in a bull market. And on page 222 of Garley's book, he said, buy those ABCDs or sell those ABCDs. He said, those are the ones that you want to work with, and they will lead you to the promised land just as good as anything that you're going to be able to find. Remember here, I want to show the weekly chart here on silver where we are. Uh, this is it because, hold on. This is extremely important, folks. I mean, just like major, extremely important. And I, I, it's going to be hard to I'll, – I'll point it out to you. But you'll see it in the newsletter this week. I'm going to be focusing on it for sure. 
Uh, here we are. We'll get it up here. And then when we get back to the break, I want to talk about this because it's uh, it's pretty important. 877-927-6648. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back, and uh, we want to thank Peter Leides for being our guest today. He's got such a wealth of information. main thing we're watching here now is the stock market looks like it's getting ready to make a new low, which this is not good, folks. There was no rally due, and it just came and went and said goodbye. The chart of silver that I have up here on the newsletter this week, and make sure you, when you study it, uh, I'm going to be really, really as precise as I can be here in the silver because that high we made this week, at that level of uh, 2130 uh, uh, 20, uh, 20, was an exact 382 on the weekly chart, and along with being a 1.618 expansion on the daily. That's why it was such an important level. Okay, so what's happening now is if we break that to the upside, that is going to be extremely bullish for silver. And I'm very, very bullish silver and gold longer term. And I'm also going to be bullish on stocks as soon as this bottom is over. There's going to be some fabulous opportunities, folks. Remember, 1987, that was not a crash. That was the best buying opportunity of the 1980s. 
The day it happened, let me tell you, folks, I don't want to go through another day like that. And I was on the right side of the market, and I don't want to go through. I was afraid I was not going to be able to get my money out of the commodity firm. I was talking to Stott. I was trading through Stotler at the time, and I called the owner of the firm, and I said, are we okay? He says, yeah, we're good. And he was. But there were a lot of them that weren't. There were more seats of, for sale on the 20th and 21st of October than ever before. Guys had lost everything because some of these option traders, you know, once they go through three standard deviations, and it did, that's what, you know, said uh, good night, Charlie, and that's what we're looking for. If we make new lows here now in the next hour or so uh, with two hours to go, not going to be looking good, folks. So, But we will be around Monday, God willing. And hopefully next week, like I say, we'll probably have Bill uh, Meridian on one day, but we will certainly have Tim Bost uh, will be our guest again. And we want to have him re revisit that map that he rode for us two weeks ago. We'll see you on the flip side. Have a wonderful weekend. Do something nice for your folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Mm -hmm.